Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. Let's start with the next question. Over here, we are asked to draw a DPDA for the language A raised to N, B raised to M such that M is greater than or equal to N by 2. Over here, there are no restriction on n. Let us say n is greater than or equal to 1. That means at least 1 a is required. And let us start with the NPDA construction. And let us start with the DPDA construction. I am taking q0 as the initial state. With the first a, I will be pushing a 1 onto the stack considering 0 as the top of the stack initially and go to state q1. In state q1, I will push a 1 for every encounter of a. As soon as I start getting b, I will go to the next state q2 by popping out one symbol from the top of the stack. At state q2, with every b, I'll have to pop one one out of the stack. Whenever I'm finished with number of ones, it means that I've already encountered equal number of a's and b's. Now I need at least two extra b's. For this, I create two more states. I declared q4 as a final state because whenever a string reaches state q4, it will be already considered to be having equal number of a's and b's followed by at least two more extra b's. Now, even if we encountered more number of b's, the number of b's are more than number of a's by at least two, so we can have a loop over there. So we have constructed a DPDA. This is actually a DPDA because we don't have multiple transition on the same input as well as we don't have any epsilon transition over here. We can say that this particular DPDA is possible and hence this particular language is deterministic. Let us see the mathematical components of this machine. Naming this machine M. We know these are the components. So over here, Q will contain the states from Q0 to Q4. We have A and B as alphabet. So sigma will contain A and B. Tau will contain the stack symbol. On the stack, we are using 0 and 1. So tau will contain 0 and 1. Let's write the transition function delta. The first transition is we have from state q0 on a as the input symbol and 0 as the top of the stack. We go to state q1 by pushing a 1 onto the stack. Similarly, the next transition from state q1 with every a as 1 as the top of the stack, we push more 1 more 1 onto the top of the stack. From state q1, at the encounter of first b, we pop out the first one after the top of the stack and go to the state q2. From state q2, with every b, we have to remove one from the top of the stack. From state q2, when we reach the bottom of the stack, we have compared the a's and b's. So we go to the next state 
by keeping the zero as it is. Now we have counted one B extra, we need to count one more. Again from Q3, with B as the input symbol and zero as the top of the stack, we go to the final state Q4. Here we have achieved number of Bs exactly two exceeding number of A's. And hence from state Q4, we will have a loop to count all the number of exceeding Bs and we can ignore them. With this, we have completed the transition function. Let us see the other components back. So far, we have seen Q, we have seen Sigma, we have discussed Tau, that is stack symbol. We have discussed transition function Delta. Over here, Q0 is the initial state. Initial stack symbol Z is taken as zero, so Z will be zero. We have only one final state Q4 and hence F will contain only Q4. Having constructed the machine and written all the components, now let us try to run one string on this particular machine. Let us say the string is ABB and we are using ID that is instantaneous description notation. Q0 is the state. ABB is the string with zero as the top of the stack. We need to do the first transition. From Q0 on A with zero, we will have a transition to Q1. String to be left as BB. Top of the stack would be now one zero. Now we need to do the next transition. That is transition number two. From state Q1 on the first B, we will have a transition to state Q2 by popping out a 1. After popping out, we will be left with just 0 on the top of the stack. From Q2 with B as the input symbol and 0 as the top of the stack, we have a transition to the next state. You will see that at the end, we are reaching to a non-final state Q3 because we end with the string ABB and we see that ABB is not actually satisfying the condition of the language and hence we are going to a non-final state and hence we can say that this particular string is rejected. In the coming videos, we will be discussing more questions on DPDA. Thank you for watching this video, stay tuned to Ikira and do subscribe.